Welcome to another painting class with Paige. Uh, tonight we're going to be painting feathers and this is going to be a great class for beginners and uh, enthusiasts alike. This class will take probably about an hour and we're kind of a little more, a little less. Uh, let's see what else can I tell you. Um, Sounds like, it looks like our sound is going, so I'm glad to hear that. If we have any kind of connection or sound issue, and I'm aware of it, um, if we can't rectify it on my end, I will probably restart the feed. So don't give up, just wait a few minutes and I'll probably restart and we'll see if we can rectify it. But last week we didn't have any issues, so I'm thinking we aren't gonna have any issues this week. Okay, so over here you can see that we're painting these feathers. Um, this is the painting that I did earlier this week. And if you wanna paint with me, you can download the reference sheet. It's a sketch and this week it's only a sketch. So uh, let's see, I can find that image here. Maybe, come on computer. Oh, it's just not wanting to play nice. Nah, nah, nah. See, whenever I go live, there's always something. So if this is the worst of it, there, there we go. Okay, so this is a sheet you're gonna wanna download. You're gonna wanna do that now, uh, just because um, I have mine sketched out already. You can either draw these, trace these, transfer these, um, whatever you want to do. And while you're doing that, I'll cover some other housekeeping items. Uh, such as what colors we're going to be using tonight. So this is kind of a free-for-all painting experience. If you have your favorite color combos or paints that you've been wanting to try, uh, this is a great class to do that. I have some colors that I'm going to use as a guideline and then you can either copy those colors or find your own. So um, I'll be using sap, I'll be using a green of some sort. Most definitely I'll be using a cobalt teal for sure. And uh, I'll be using some purples, mixing some purples and I'll be using sodalite, which is a Payne's gray color. And oranges, some oranges. I'm also going to be using a paint that has a little bit of a uh, sparkly um, flex in it, kind of like gold, but not exactly gold, uh, just to change things up a little bit. Also tonight, uh, if you're here, go ahead and let me know that you're here in the chat. I see Laurel's joining us tonight and I really appreciate you being here tonight. Um, I just like to know where everybody's from, so if you can tune in, please do. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just make sure we, everything is good here, that I'm not getting any messages. Yeah, I think our stream is good. Okay. Um, we're going to be using some different tools tonight too, which you can see over here on my list. I'm going to be using a resist crayon again. So, um, if you have access to one or a regular white crayon, you're going to want one of these. I'm also going to be using some gouache tonight, which um, if you have white paint or a gel pen, you can use those items if you don't have gouache. Also, if you don't have any of the white paint, don't worry. You can just leave areas white. You don't have to paint in those areas. You just have to paint around them. We'll also be using salt. I'm just using Himalayan salt tonight. Uh, we'll be exploring um, some wet and wet techniques. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate you tuning in and letting me know my sound is good. <laughs> um, and we're also going to be using pens tonight. So this is just going to be a fun, easy, low-key kind of class tonight. I'm glad you're all here. And I think we can get rolling. If you're new here and this is your first class with me, my name is Paige. I'm the chief pixel pusher and paintbrusher over at Gumption. And I've really loved doing these live classes. I think it's awesome that my family tunes in and friends and students actually tune in as well. So thanks for being here. Um, 
I hope that you get something good out of this. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them down below in the uh, comments and I'm, I'm happy, happy to answer those. I look up periodically and can see chat from where I'm sitting. Um, and you can also save this for the end if you want to do that too. My phone's dinging. I think that's Kyle just letting me know. I think uh, we're golden. So good. Okay, so let's switch our screen now. And by now, maybe you've got your feather sketched out. So this was the sheet that I was playing with. This is kind of loosely what we're shooting for. You can see that I've traced these out on my page. And I think tonight we'll go from left to right if that helps you if you're still sketching. Um, and I will be doing similar to what I did in my example. So we'll be using an umber color. So I'm gonna switch it over to my palette cam so you can kind of see um, what an umber looks like. So this is raw umber and it is a tan color. It's kind of a tanny yellowy golden color and it's a great color to use for animals and beaches. So I'm just going to mix up some of that and I think we'll do a little a little bit of wet and wet in this first feather here. So I'm going to actually just going to use this brush that I'm using here. And wet and wet, so I'm just laying down water. I guess I have a little bit of pigment here, but I'm not too worried about it. So you're just laying down your water, it may be hard to see. So mine has a little bit of pigment in it, which is kind of lucky, but you might have to tilt your paper so you can see your water because in Idaho here, it seems to dry pretty quickly. And I'm gonna try to preserve the center spine of this feather so it can remain lighter. I don't always think it's bad if you have a little bit of pigment in your water because it really does help you see what's happening. Okay. And we may be doing a little round robin tonight. That's what I call it where you're working on a couple of these feathers at the same time so one can dry while you're working in the other one. Unless you want me to run my hair dryer, which I try to not do while I'm on camera too much. And I've been pretty lucky because it's been dry here. Okay, so I think I've got all of my feather with water. So I'm going to go back into my pigment here over at the palette cam. We're going to kind of try to give this feather a little bit of dimension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take this flat brush and run my pigment along that spine. Whoops. Now if you get into the center that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Tap it in there if you like. Now I can take a, this is a, should be a dry brush here. And I got it a little bit in the spine here so I can see if I can lift a little bit of that with my dry brush. And that's not so bad. So I'm just going to leave that. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to dry. We'll come back to this guy. 
but we'll go to this one next to it. We're also going to be using a wet and wet technique in this feather. And I'm choosing to use purple. So I'm going to have a darker purple with a medium purple, and then I'm going to dilute it. So we'll do a little bit of gradation in this next one. But first and foremost, we need to, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna use my resist crayon. You can see it has no pigment there. And I'm going to put little circles of this resist crayon all over this feather. You know, there are so many different kinds of birds and bird feathers and different feathers for different purposes that it's really interesting when I was doing, um, looking through research for this, it's really kind of fun. And of course you can make up your own bird feather, any color that you want. So you can see I'm just going around and I can kind of see from my angle here at the table where I have gotten good coverage with this crayon. Now, if you don't have a crayon and you don't have white paint, what I would recommend is just have a, a good round brush. This one might be a little bit big. If you have one a little bit smaller, just a hair smaller, you can just paint around these circles. There is more than one way to paint a watercolor. So next we're gonna mix paint for this and I'm gonna switch you over to my palette cam so you can kind of see what's going on over here. So I have this great mineral purple that I like to use and we're gonna use it tonight. If you don't have a purple color, mix blue and red together and you will get a purple, a beautiful purple color. And you can determine yourself if you want a warm or a cool purple. And I would recommend ultramarine blue. And if you have an alizarin crimson, you can do that. Um, just depends on what you have. So you can see this is a pretty good, let's see if I can bring this over here a little bit. So this is a pretty good solid purple. There's quite a bit of pigment in there. So next I'm going to mix, I'm going to put a little water in and I'm going to mix my mineral purple with sodalite to make it just a little bit darker. And you can also do just use one pigment and um, do a gradation that way. I always think it's kind of fun to mix paint and see what you get. So I'm dipping into my sodalite which is a dark gray color. If you have Payne's gray, it's essentially the same color. It's just made out of different, um, different pigment. The pigment comes from actually a soda light rock. Okay. So here you can see how I've got these two colors. This one's a little bit bluer. It's darker. And then you have this warmer, purple. Okay, so I'm going to rinse off my brush. I need to grab a paper towel here. This guy's drying nicely, so that's good. Zoom out a little bit here. So I need to find the perfect size of round brush. Here we go. And this is perfect for the size of feather. This one's probably a four. Use what you have. If you don't have a bunch of brushes, use your tip and spread your paint that way. First, I'm dipping it in. Hey, Sam, I see you there. I see the E. I'm not sure what the E means, but hello, it's nice to see you here. Okay, so I'm going to dip it in my darker pigment here. And we're going to start with the darkest here and then gradiate down. And I'm going to try to preserve the center spine here. So we'll see how we do. Okay. So what 
because I am using a resist crayon wherever I paint over the resist crayon paint does not stick which is one great reason to use a resist crayon so I'm moving kind of slow here Could speed it up a little because what I don't want is for this to dry on me because you'll have a much smoother gradient if you move faster so I'm moving this bead I'm getting to this point now I'm going to dip into my warm purple and start painting with it and I'm moving this bead of water down. I'm going to try to preserve the spine. Just paint that down. And I'm going to carry it down a little farther than I did in my example. Make sure you get all of that covered. And now I can spread this here. I'm going to dip my brush in water, tap, tap, and draw this down. So this will make it lighter down here at the bottom. I might even go back in. Draw that down. And what you can even do, if it's not light enough for you, you can tap your brush on your paper towel and you can do a little lifting because this has got quite a bit of water in it and you can lift a little bit of the water out and make it even lighter here I might draw around the spine of this feather cool right I love that uh, the resist works so well for these applications. And it looks like I may have missed a little bit here. Just dab that in there. And you can always go back in, dab pad pigment back in there. Wet and wet is a really fun technique and that's what makes watercolor so special. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this guy is still wet. So I am going to, I think I'm gonna move on to this feather and by the time that this one's done, this one should be dry and we can go back into it. So I just need to figure out what color I should make this guy. So Sam asked me to mix green and yellow together. So I think maybe, Sam, we should make this feather green since you're um, asking about that, okay? So we're gonna go to the palette cam and I'm gonna show you how to mix green. So I'm glad that you asked that. So I have this really pretty fancy yellow here. And any yellow is gonna work, but depending on whether it's cool or warm will kind of depend, um, it, will, it will determine how, your, how warm or cool your green is. So I'm trying to get enough water here. Okay. <laughs> So next I'm going to go into my, um, this is my ultramarine blue. I don't know if you can see that very well. Maybe you'll see it better here. This ultra blue. I'm going to rinse off my brush a little bit. 
And watch this, Sam. Blue and yellow make green. And depending on how much pigment you put in there will depend on how dark it is or how light it is. Okay, so that's a pretty dark green, right? So I think I'm going to actually mix two greens and then we'll kind of do a similar technique with this feather that we did on the purple feather. So I'm going to put some blue over here. This is the ultramarine blue. I'm going to clean off my brush and dip into my yellow. See, see what I mean? That you can get all kinds of different greens just depending on how much of certain colors you get in there. Like that's a pretty poppin' green, don't you think? So I like this green. I'm gonna keep this one and I'm gonna keep working on this other green. I feel like it needs a little more pigment in there. We'll have one darker and one lighter. You gotta mix it really good. Still want a little more of this ultra in there. Okay. Okay, so that's good for me. I'm gonna go into this feather and I'm going to first go in wet on dry. So I'm going to use my light green over here and I'm just going to start directly putting the pigment on. And I'm going to try to move fast because this paint will dry pretty quickly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in the darker pigment in here. And I'm just moving this bead of water here and I'm leaving, you know, I'm just drawing along my sketch here. Whoops. If you color outside the lines, don't worry. It's okay. Okay. So I'm hoping that this will stay kind of wet here. I'm leaving, I'm preserving this spine. We may paint it dark here in a minute, but for now, I'm gonna try to preserve it. Get these little areas here. Okay. So that's a really nice green that we mixed. Do you, don't you agree? I think it's pretty great. So now I can go in and get into my darker green over here with my brush and I can dab in color. So I'm going to do that around the edges and let that paint mix. This one might have dried a little bit, but you can draw it down into your It almost looks like a leaf, doesn't it? I'm just dabbing along the outside of the feather. I'm glad that you decided that you wanted to see green, Sam, because that brings some good variety to our paintings here. You can even draw this out a little bit more if you want. So what I might do is see if I can clean up one of my edges here with a thin brush. 
a little bit of pigment while you are painting away. These brushes are great. This is a Trakel Golden Tacklon 2050. It's more of like a script brush, so it has a longer, longer bristles. It's great for making lines. And you could always come back into this feather when it's dry and um, create lines in it. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up this line here. Got some, I guess I should say I'm gonna try here. But what's beautiful about this and What's great about mixing your own color, ultramarine blue granulates. And what that means is it creates this texture. So if you can see, I'm gonna zoom in. There's this texture where this color separates. And some people like granulation and some people do not. I am a fan, however, and that's what's great about ultramarine is it does that. So we're going to let this guy dry a little bit. I'm going to zoom out. We're going to check this guy. So this guy's still pretty wet. Sometimes you can do the finger test. Sometimes you're going to come back with pigment. But I think at least we can start working in the top of this guy. We'll let this one dry. This one's done a pretty good job of drying and you can see where the resist crayon has totally resisted the pigment. You could go back in and clean up the edges if you want in the purple feather as well, which we may do if time allows here. But I'm gonna move back into this big feather. And I am going to mix, I have a, let's see what our mineral purple looks like with, well, I can just do it right in here, with our burnt, or our raw umber, I'm sorry. So this is a raw umber. You can use any color that you want. If you have a sepia color, you can use that. Uh, I personally love purples and these tans mixed together. And so we're gonna try that. So I'm gonna come into the palette cam so you can kind of see this color that mixing this raw umber that I had in here with this mineral purple. It's just kind of a warm, warm brown color. Okay. So I'm going to go into these areas here and just paint these stripes in here. And because this is dry, it should be no problem. You can use any color that you like, but um, this color is looking pretty good. I'm just gonna kind of go down the feather and add in these details. And there are all kinds of feathers, striped feathers, feathers with dots, feathers that change color and are multiple colors. Now you'll want to watch your hand and your other feathers. I haven't done this yet and dumped my hand in there, but inevitably it will happen. That was why I thought moving left to right might be a good uh, might be a good idea. 
Okay. So this area is still a little bit wet, but I'm gonna try to put a little pigment in here anyway. You can kind of see how it will blend out. I'm just gonna tap color in this area because it's still wet and see if it'll stay in that area. And it looks like it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna use my thinner brush here to um, kind of define the spine of this feather a little bit in the bottom part of it. You can also clean up some edges here if you want to and add these little wispy parts at the bottom of the feather. You can even add a little water here and kind of give it some dimension. It's amazing how uh, your watercolor brushes always find those little teeny tiny hairs. So I can also use this brush C to go on the outside of my feather. And I think I'm going to define some of these separations here between these spaces here. So you can kind of see what's going on a little bit more. And because this is wet, it will it blends with the wet area there, but that's okay. Watercolor is doing what watercolor does. And you can continue to layer your paints if you like that kind of technique. If you want it darker, you can add darker pigment or you can wait till this dries and do just another layer. The great thing about these skinny brushes is that you can add lines to your feathers as well. And I'm just gonna demonstrate this a little bit here. So I've dipped into raw umber. We're gonna go in an area that's sort of dry and you can draw these light lines that connect to the spine here. You can also do this with a pin after you've painted it. There's all kinds of options with these feathers. Whoop. I dipped myself into this other paint here. So for now, I am probably going to leave this feather to continue to dry. Maybe we will come back to it. But we still have some feathers to go. So we'll zoom out and we'll come to these other feathers. Okay, so I'm going to work on this feather I think next and we're going to use yellow and purple 
and we'll move over here. I have this really beautiful, it's a medium yellow that's very warm. So where we used Hansa before, this is a warm kind of golden, it's like an egg yolk yellow. And we'll use our mineral purple since we already have this on our palette. And we're again gonna try to preserve the spine of our um, feather. But I'm starting pretty vibrant here. I just love this color. I'm gonna try to preserve the center part. Isn't that gorgeous? Love this. So Sam, if you were gonna mix a green out of this color, it would make a really warm kind of green. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse off my brush here. I'm gonna dip into my mineral purple tap a little and then I'm gonna pick up where I left off here I might need a little more pigment here my pigment load with the yellow was really nice there we go so you can see how vibrant that is. And you can even push it up into the yellow if you want. Okay. And what's great about round brushes is you can create these beautiful shapes that are like leaf shapes. So I can put down my brush and flatten it and make it a little fatter and then lift I'm gonna do that here. Press down, drag, lift. And you can even do it from this side. Press down, drag and lift. So I've sort of obliterated my center there, but you get the point. And if you wanna add more pigment in, you can just drop it in there. I'm gonna rinse off this brush and I'm gonna to try to clean up my center here. I'm gonna dip it into my purple. Just clean up this line a little. Along the spine, I'm actually gonna drag this down so I can create that base there. Let's see, I'm gonna get a new brush and I've dipped it in water and I've wiped it off and I'm gonna drag it down the center here so I can pick up some of this pigment. And see if that will work. I'm also gonna fill in this gap here I mean, good enough, right? Okay, awesome. I'm loving this yellow. How are you guys feeling about it? Let's see. So our green is almost dry, but I think I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna put in the center spine and how about we use our green that we mixed to do that. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of sodalite or a darker color mixed in with it to make it a little bit darker. Let's see if we can. I'm just gonna drag it through here.
So it starts thin here and then you drag it down. You could even It really looks a little bit like a leaf, doesn't it? That's okay. Okay, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're at 40 minutes, so we'll zoom out and we'll keep moving. I'm gonna let this guy dry and we can go back in and paint some little dots in here and some lines, but I'm gonna let this portion dry a little bit. So we're gonna move to this guy and I'm gonna use my sparkly paint. So if you have sparkly paint, now is a good time. If you have a color you've been wanting to try, another good time for this as well. And I'm gonna use a brown brush. I really like this round brush. This is the one I used for this yellow pigment and it's a faux squirrel hair and it seems to hold pigment really nicely. So I only have one of those. So I'm gonna wet my, this paint is a paint that has a little bit of honey in it so I'm gonna wet it first because for whatever reason it needs to be um, needs a little pre-love so it can shine like it's supposed to I'm gonna move over to my soda light and mix quite a bit of pigment here so I can get a nice dark color So that's pretty dark. Let's go to our palette cam. You can kind of see what's going on. You may or may not be able to see the sparkle in this guy. If you don't have sparkle, that's quite all right. And then you can see how dark this guy is. So I'm gonna start similar to how I did this feather. And I'm just gonna do the top dark and move down this color is amazing at granulating it's just so beautiful okay now I'm gonna dip my brush in my water and I'm gonna hit this very special pink color. And I'm going to put it on the palette here and then I'm going to actually I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up because once I hit that dark color it's going to mix and I want to preserve some of this beautiful pink that we've got here. I'm gonna try to move fast, as fast as I can here, so I can mix. And you can just see how it goes into blend mode. Clean up this edge here. And I think I would like to add a little more dark to the top. So I'm gonna do that. Kind of tap it in there. What else should I do here? Because I think for this one, we might use light, we might use some gouache, maybe painting in some white once this dries. So I'm just adding a little extra 
flare. And it's so interesting to see this on the camera. To see how it mixes. Okay, so I think I'm gonna let this guy dry. We'll come back to the spine for it. We're gonna move to this guy because we're gonna use salt in this one. And then maybe we can go back to some of our other feathers and uh, have a little more fun. So this guy, I, I used several colors on him. And I used cobalt blue, so I'm probably gonna use cobalt blue up here. I'm gonna use my purple in here, some sodalite, and then some umber, I think, to kind of mix them all together. And I think I think I'm just gonna do wet onto the paper. So let's get our cobalt teal going. This is my cobalt teal. Let's see if I have any other mixing, clean mixing areas to use. This is a beautiful color. It's, I think it must have a little bit of um, white pigment in it to make it opaque or something. Maybe I am wrong there, but you can mix this color by using a phthalo and a, a white. So there's a Chinese white that I have on my palette that I never use, but if you're gonna make a cobalt color, those are good colors to do that with. And I'm gonna try to get as much pigment in here as I can. So this has a nice consistency you can see here. Okay, let's switch our, to our overhead view. So the top part of this guy, I'm gonna hit with this cobalt teal and you'll see it will start granulating pretty quick. Try to get to this first area of this. Guy. Okay, so we're gonna have to move quick now, which means I'm gonna have to move quick. So I'm gonna go in with my sodalite. I don't know if you need to worry so much about the spine. Oh, I was supposed to use purple here. Well, that's okay. We'll use the sodalite because it granulates so beautifully, just like this teal color. We're just gonna obliterate the spine. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna rinse off my brush. I'm going in for the purple. You can see these start blending so beautifully. Okay, so now I see some of my paint is drying. I need to get some salt out. I'm gonna put it in my hand first. I'm gonna start putting salt down. I mean, this paint already granulates, but okay. quickly move back to Painting. I'm gonna hit my raw umber and go in here with my raw umber. I've got quite a bit of pigment here, which is good. Do my little wisps at the bottom. And I think I'm just gonna finish out this guy that way. More salt down. Now, once your salt's down, you just leave your painting to dry. But what's beautiful about the salt, and we might get most of this effect down here, is that it sucks up color and creates this beautiful texture. So that's probably good. You can throw your extra salt over your shoulder if you need to. This guy is still wet. So I'm gonna come back into this guy and add some stripes with a thin brush, maybe some dots. 
whoops, with this purple color that I've got here. Check your fine hairs to make sure they're gone. You can just add accents to your feathers. And you can even see if you paint over this the same color, you know, it'll create a little bit darker line there. And I think I'm actually going to color this. Enter with a light wash of this purple. You can add dots. Just have fun with it. So this week I've also done a couple, I've put a couple of extra videos up on this channel. Usually I have, I should say I have one every week that is not a live video. And I often, well I always basically anymore use Procreate to do my sketching. Uh, and then I transfer it to my watercolor paper. So if you have an iPad and you're interested in learning how to draw with the iPad and use the program Procreate, there is a video that I put out this week that can walk you through those steps really easily. It's really for beginners and people who aren't necessarily super tech savvy. Um, and it talks to you about how you get the program, where you get it, and what the menus are within the program. And I'm gonna create a whole series dedicated to Procreate for the non-techie. So if you're interested in that, check that out. I also have a process of video for some other feathers that I did um, in this painting. So there's a process video, you can watch that and just see how I paint those. Okay, so this guy's gonna dry. Um, we have the pins that we get to use as well as some white gouache paint that I promised you. So I'm gonna show you how to use the white paint. And I'm gonna paint the center of this guy dark, I've decided. So we'll just go down the center here. You may have rogue salt in your uh, other feathers, that's okay. really just to free up so you can have a little bit of fun doing new stuff. And you know what I see I didn't do here was I didn't add my little floofies at the bottom. So I'm going to do that and I'm not going to touch the center. We'll just kind of create this design down at the bottom Ooh. and if you get in there no problem not this edge okay so I guess I'll let this guy dry and then I can kind of show you how I would use a pen so when you have black pins, <clears throat> excuse me, they come in different sizes and the number determines the size of the pen. Now I really love a 0.5 pen and I love a 0.05 pen and I'll just show you the difference. So this is a thick 
thicker nib. And then this one is a thinner nib. Really skinny little nib. So this is great. Now you can do it the opposite way. You can draw something with your pen and then go over it with watercolor. But what you really need to do is make sure that your pens can withstand water or else you'll wind up with a mess. And if you're not sure, you can always start, uh, you can paint and then go over the top with your black pen. So what I would do, and what's kind of fun, is you can just illustrate the outside and the little details within your feathers. When I started uh, watercolor painting again, I used this technique a lot. And I would have waterproof um, pens. I'll switch this around here. And I would sketch and then I would paint. This, a lot of urban sketchers kind of use this technique where they're painting and drawing over the top. You can also use colored pencils, which I promise we will do a class that utilizes colored pencil and watercolor as well. That might wind up being our next class. What do you think? Do you think that would be a good class? Let me know in the comments. I keep dipping my hand in this paint. <laughs> Pretty much whenever I paint, especially if I'm painting with acrylic, I wind up wearing it. Most of my clothes now have paint on them somewhere. So I'm using this thinner um, thinner nib here. These are some pens that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and I haven't used them too much but they say they're water and fade proof. I would say if you're definitely going to use something like this let it sit on your paper for a couple minutes before you start painting over the top to make sure it doesn't smear. But these seem like pretty good pens to use. There are so many fabulous art supplies out there. You're sure to find something that works. So you could draw in individual pieces that make up the feather if you want. It just has a different kind of look than just plain watercolor. You could also do this um, keep dipping into that. You could also do this with a paint, a skinny paintbrush as well. Just use a darker color for your pigment. You could even use ink, I think, if you wanted. sky is really the limit when you're working with all these awesome supplies that you can do. You can find your own style um, and what you like to work with. And that will fluctuate and change as you use more tools and you learn more about those tools. So that's an example of how you might use a pen. Uh, it's kind of fun, it adds a different feel to it. Uh, let's see, we're, I told you we were going to use gouache. So I have a little gouache in here. I'm going to squirt it out of the tube so you can kind of just see what that looks like. I'm actually very interested in making my own paint. And so I'm going to be making some videos on that. And I definitely am interested in making my own gouache. But this can show you what the paint looks like coming out of the tube. You can use a gel pen with white paint. 
but it's just like um, watercolor in that you it's water soluble and the more water you add the more it dilutes it so let's get a good screenshot of that I'm just gonna see that consistency of that so I have a pretty relatively skinny brush here And you could do the same thing with this brush and pigment here. This is pretty light in this area, but you could paint over the top. I often use gouache if I'm going to do highlights. You can do it when you're um, doing waves. And of course, it's okay if it mixes with your water or your wet paint. It's water soluble, so it's not going to harm anything nothing's going to go wrong it might blend and you might not like how that blends but of course it's really effective over your darker colors so you could just paint in your spine with white paint sometimes i think you need a couple extra coats I, uh, in previous lessons, have showed you my white waterproof um, paint that's um, it's water-based, but they dry up really weird. That's why I'm interested. I'm kind of interested in making this white gouache paint so my students can use it. And I feel like it will last a little bit better. But if you don't have white paint, you can always use masking fluid. You can always use um, the method where you just leave out at that area. You can use a resist crayon. That's what kind of why I'm showing you all of this. So you understand you have lots of different options when painting. And you'll find things in tools that you like to use. And when you use them a lot, that will create your style. And you'll get more and more comfortable with using paint. Might have to dip into your water and then dip into your paint here. Now this particular gouache I can reactivate with water in my palette. So that's great. I could have reactivated this paint that I had in here, but I wanted you to see the consistency of the paint out of the tube. So you can see how this color here just doesn't seem as white. You may have to do a couple of layers if, that, if, if that's the desired effect that you want. You can also kind of create kind of depth too. Okay. Okay, so we've done our resist crayon, we've done some wet and wet, we've done some pen and ink, um, some gradients here. Let's take a look and see what this, this guy looks like. Um, I have a rubber cement pickup, but it's not at my desk right now. So I'm gonna use another piece of paper an envelope nonetheless and try I see where there are still some wet areas so I'm just going to kind of try to push the, the salt and you can see I'm going to zoom in here you can see where it's got some of that pigment in there I'm just going to push it off onto my desk and clean it up later And the reason I'm using the envelope is because I might have oils on my fingers, so I want to be careful. I generally use the rubber cement pickup so 
I don't get um, finger oils on my painting. But you can see here in the camera, I mean, look at this amazing texture that you get. And a lot of times, if you kind of look at this from a side angle, you'll see kind of some shiny parts. I don't think you can see that. And I think in this light, I, I can't see that. But salt kind of leaves some great textures and colors behind. I guess I should zoom out here. So I still have wet paint down here, but you can see that salt's doing its work. And I'm gonna leave that. For the sake of this class, but I mean, this is probably one of my favorite techniques. It's probably overused in some of my classes, but um, you can use things like saran wrap and put down your pigment and then take saran wrap and put it on there and leave it on there for it to dry and it will leave some cool texture. You can use cheesecloth as well and that does some cool texture too. Uh, the sky's the limit. You can use a sponge and I think we've done that in this class before. And you can continue to go in and refine these feathers if you like as well. I, you know, would probably continue to shade them and give them form, much like this one, because it has this darker area on the outside. It feels like it's curving a little bit more. I mean, you could spend a whole day painting. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could. <laughs> And it's so fun. So what did you guys think of this class? Did you feel like, excuse me, you learned something new? I think I'm going to try to put a spine down this guy. He's so beautiful as he is, however. But just because. Let me know if you're interested in seeing a paint making video. I plan on doing one. Uh, if you're interested, um, tune into the channel and uh, I'll definitely, you'll be in the know if you subscribe. Hey, awesome, Laurel. I'm glad that you had a good time. Uh, I hope the boys enjoyed it too if they painted along with you. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them down below. Uh, again, don't be afraid to check out those other videos on my channel. Um, you might learn something new out of those as well. Uh, I'd like to make sure that I thank my Patreon subscriber, Colin Jackson, who is helping support this channel and it helps me make videos for you. And it looks like Laurel has a request for a rainbow trout. So maybe we'll have to do that next week because rainbow trout are really quite pretty. So, okay, let's do a rainbow trout next week. Now, uh, Laurel, do you want to do some uh, colored pencil in that as well? Or are you wanting just watercolor? Let me know. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I am excited about next week. We can do that rainbow trout. And um, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them down below. Thanks again to Colin for supporting this channel and for you for coming out and hanging out with me in the evening on Thursdays. Uh, I enjoy doing this and I love having interaction with you and that you're tuning in with me. So thanks again. Until next time, keep painting and keep creating. And thanks again. We'll see you later.